So what I'm about to do right now is show you uh, sort of my process when I'm painting an abstract painting, sort of step by step, but I'm just kind of going to just show you what I'm thinking about um, for each move that I make. Um, in a painting like this, obviously it's already started, alright, so I've got some few basic colors on there. Um, I like the colors. Um, I like this yellow a lot. It's nice and calming. The blue is a nice dark purplish blue, and it's already a good composition. Um, we've got this dark shape up here where your eye is probably going to travel to first. Uh, this piece in the middle here, and then this larger shape at the bottom. So they're kind of occupying their own space, and it's really creating a nice composition. It might stay the same, it might change, um, but um, I don't know how long. Uh, I will be working on this painting. Um, it could be very close to finished. It could be very far away from finished. I don't know yet, but um, I have this sort of square right here uh, because I was painting over this, but then I took it off and I've created what looks to be this interesting square rectangular shape. Um, really unusual to see in painting because you've got this hard edge right here and um, you can't really make that with a brush so and I was using red so I've got this nice deep red color which is really complementing the blue in some areas and it looks nice on top of this yellow here these two drips I think I'm gonna keep those drips there they look nice um, but the square shape that is happening here. I don't want to keep all of that. It's just too, it's too big. It's, I'm going to end up taking it away, but I'm going to take it away slowly and leave some of it because I think that's going to be kind of interesting, um, especially with these drips. So this is a painting on paper. Um, another thing is I stuck two pieces together. So it's a, looks to be an 18 by 24. I trimmed it at the bottom a little because there was nothing interesting happening down here anyway. So I cut that right off as you can see a nice clean cut. And then there's this seam in the middle. Usually a big no-no in painting so um, you want to try to get rid of that as best you can. And it's possible you just got to use a few layers of paint, a few more than you normally would. Which I'm going to do um, if I finish this painting. So we've got some nice colors, a nice blue against a nice pale yellow, some green happening because they're mixing, um, and we've got a little splash of red down in the corner. And it's not a picture yet, it's certainly not a painting yet, but we're going to see where we go from here, and we're going to see where it takes us. So my first thought was to start getting rid of that square um, shape that's on the paper, but in pieces, so not all at once, and I'm also going to want to leave traces of it, um, and also not too many traces, I don't want it to be, I don't want to overdo it, essentially. So. I have mixed up another pale yellow. It's not going to be the exact same color as it was before, but that's okay because we want color, ugh, cousins of colors. It's always good to have. So what I'm going to try to do is just um, try to cover that square and it should be pretty easy, but we'll see. leave some of that corner at the bottom.
just going to start adding some more Joan Mitchell-esque um, strokes with the yellow. So you can kind of see the brush itself, sort of how big the brush was. Um, the lines, the strokes, whatever you want to call it, but um, it might help me make some nice shapes later on in the painting. So basically I'm not making flat shapes, I'm making um, some lines with the yellow right now. And I'm making sure my arm's going in all different directions, or my wrist, rather. Maybe take it onto the blue down here. And I'm just gonna use the rest of this yellow that I have. And I just try to cover up some more areas that weren't successfully covered and it's starting to dry so we'll stop with that right there so I noticed something interesting when I added the yellow and that was that when I took it onto the blue here I you know brought it over the top of the blue it kind of you know started to um, take its own um, space inside that square that was there and sort of became part of the square and you can see um, I stopped just at the edge and now it's over here it's kind of creating some kind of weird depth or an illusion sort of so the square has kind of come to life almost even though I my mission was to take it away originally so what I've done now is I've mixed up a red nice sort of brick red it looks like uh, it's very similar to this red right here it's a little brighter which is good that's what i wanted i did not want the exact same color that i have there um, and i have a different size brush uh, this is about an inch wide and that's because i'm just going to try to make a weird blobby shape right up here above the red drips um, as quickly as I can so I need a, a larger brush to do that and that's what I'm gonna do my goal is just to add a red shape right up here it's kind of intersecting with the corner of the square that I left on the paper And I'm gonna stop when it's an interesting shape, when the red is not looking like anything, you know, it's not looking like a bunny rabbit or a house or anything. It's, it's just a kind of a blob. That's all I want with the red. Okay. So, Oh, there's some drips, little ones. They added some water to it, but yeah, we'll just do that. And then I'll just add a little trace of it up, uh, right up here. So that could be totally covered over at some point. Um, but right now, it's just, you know, I wanted a little more of this color red somewhere in another corner. So I decided to put it there. And um, yeah, that red, it's, it's popping. So warm colors come forward on the paper. So 
Um, it's definitely prominent, and I don't know if that's going to stick around either. Could be part of the underpainting later, but we'll see. Um, but right now, it's an interesting shape. We don't know what its business is doing there, so um, it is what it is. And um, it's, uh, it's interesting because the red drips, the two red drips down here that I decided to leave in, that was just up to me. It's a different shade of red than this, so it's giving that red some depth, a little. Not a lot, but, you know, a little bit. And that creates some interesting um, imagery to look at. <clears throat> so I've mixed up this sort of lavender color, um, a light lavender. And that wasn't my intention exactly. My plan was to get this kind of light, pale, very pale green that's happening underneath the pale yellow. Um, sometimes I don't always, my mixing doesn't always go as planned, so, you know, because I use the wrong combinations of colors or whatever, but I can still use this uh, because this is like still very, very early stages of the painting, so it could all get covered up at some point. Um, and kind of show through under some stronger colors later on, which would make the picture very interesting. But right now I'm just, so I thought about this, where to put this uh, lavender, and I decided up here in the corner, kind of partly concealing this, um, this kind of shape here. Uh, like I said before, this Joan Miss Mitchell, very powerful, um, two simple strokes with the brush and I'm going to partly conceal it so some of it's going to come through on this large lavender shape that's that's nice against the yellow it's a nice pop um, okay <laughs> that's nice so I'm liking this I'm liking some of this already Go on to the blue a little bit. And what I'm doing with the brush, I'm kind of, you know, making it, I want to make it look like the brush is leaving the canvas a lot. It's not just like swirling around. It just doesn't give a good effect. I never liked it. It's just um, something I've done. That's a really nice lavender color. I think I'm going to continue it over here onto the red, actually. And there's really no meaning whatsoever about, you know, um, what, what shapes you're trying to make at this point. I mean, the shapes will matter later on, but as long as they're odd and unique and just spontaneous. That's all really going for. And just there's there's really no rules at this point, so maybe it's just some lavender there. It's looking nice against the yellow and against the blue, so that that doesn't happen a lot. Um, you know, this color working with two other colors, so kind of lucked out there. Um, bring it here. Just soften out that bottom. See, I kind of had a hard edge, so I'm just going to soften it out by um, using the brush lightly. 